There are two different scenes in Jeffrey Eugenides' 2011 novel, The Marriage Plot, that have stuck with me for many years since I've read the book. The first takes place in a local post office, where a woman, American woman named Janice, goes up to Mitchell, another American, and greets him and, and tells him this. At the end of the conversation, she says, it's a funny thing. You're born in America, you grow up, and what do they tell you? They tell you that you have a right to the pursuit of happiness, and that the way to be happy is to get lots of stuff, right? I did that. Had a house, a job, a boyfriend, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy because all I did every day was think about myself. I thought that the world re revolved around me, and guess what? It didn't. So that was the first scene in the post office. The next scene is on another day at sunset. Mitchell's at the top of the Acropolis in Athens by himself, and he's praying. And he wonders if living for Christ represented the exact sort of way of, that you need to live in order to be free of that constant preoccupation with self. And this is what um, he said. He wonders if living for Christ ex it represented the exact sort of humbling that he needed in order to die to his old conceited self. What if that truth was so simple that everyone could grasp it? Gazing down from the ancient mountain, he entertained a revolutionary thought that he and all his enlightened friends knew nothing about life and that maybe this crazy lady knew something big. I guess what I love so much about the book is just the nostalgia for the 80s and the postmodernism and um, Freud, the, um, all those things about Derrida and Foucault. Um, even the um, nostalgia for the music. Um, but it's such an important reminder that you can have everything, an Ivy League education, you can have great wealth, you can have experiences traveling, you can have um, great sexual adventures, you, you can have it all in every possible respect, and that will still not make you happy. And it has to do with a very ancient Christian idea, and it, the idea is the idea of sin. Sin means to fall short of an ideal, to not live up to what we could um, accomplish if we were doing things right. And, and, and in many ways, Martin Luther, the, reformed, um, the um, famous reformer from the 16th century, he said that there's an experience that we have, he calls it incurvatus se in Latin. It means to be curved in on oneself. And that what is what it means to live just for yourself. Um, to be curved in on yourself in the way that a black hole is curved in on itself in space, that anything that comes near it gets sucked into it and made its own. So fortunately, um, in my experience, the Christian faith that I've experienced in my life offers a way out of this experience of being completely preoccupied with oneself. It, it reminds us that there's something much bigger than ourselves. There's God and creation. Um, and, and, and there's the responsibility that we have to care for each other and look out for, we, for each other. And these are very simple ways that get us out of that terrible, that terrible habit of just thinking about ourselves all the time, uh, becoming a kind of black hole sort of person. My name is Malcolm Clemens Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, California. Thanks for watching. More good news.